place i finally made it and good morning everybody welcome to the channel and welcome to blake dean the top of harcastle crags now this place is a special place to me now i know i say that quite a lot because i've been taking you to places that hold quite a lot of sentimental value to me so when i grew up i used to do a lot of hiking with my friends and we used to go off for like two three days and we used to just go to harcastle crags but we always ended up at Blake Dean. Now just past the bridge there's this whole little like gnarly area full of rocks that you can camp underneath and I used to be out with my friend there and sometimes we'd get dropped off here and spend like two or three days hiking back to Tomerden so this area is it's it's just got so much history for myself so I'm hoping that I can share a little bit of that with you and hoping I can just you know encourage you to get out and come up here and view this place because it's absolutely beautiful. So during the summer months, you get a lot of people coming up here, picnicking and just having a really good time. So I highly recommend that you get yourself up to Blake Dean if you can. It is the top of Harcastle Crags. There are car parks at the top part of Harcastle Crags here and there are little areas that you can park your car on. So just be careful, it is quite a, a narrow road, but I highly recommend it. And yeah, you should get yourself up here. But today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the top of here and we're gonna work our way down into Harcastle Crags see what we can see we'll do a little bit of exploring a little bit of location scouting and if anything jumps out like a nice unique composition maybe we'll get a decent picture who knows but it's all about the exploration and it's all about the journey so yeah that bridge back there I noticed this tree now this tree is perfect it's the kind of subject that I'm looking for when I come out to do woodland photography it's gnarly it's twisted it's on its own it's got these giant rocks around it covered in moss so it looks alive it looks like it's got history it looks like it's lived a life of its own and it's so perfect for what I want but sadly the weather conditions are meh there's no fog, it's rather overcast, there's not even a little bit of rain and there's no sunlight coming through. So sadly, it's, it's not the right time to take this picture. So I'm a little bit frustrated, but you know, part of exploring and getting out is all about location scouting. So I'm now aware of this tree um, and I will come back here when it's foggy, but it's such a shame. But what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm looking at and you'll get an idea of like, you can probably get the idea of what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to get across. It's, it's got character, it's on its own, it's, it's, it's just got everything that I'm looking for. This tree is on a bit of a hill. And because it's on a bit of a hill, you'll have to point your camera up to take a picture to kind of get the composition correct. But because it's on the hill, you're gonna hit the sky. So if I come back and there's fog everywhere, hopefully that'll help blend it into the sky and hopefully you won't even see the sky and then you'll get those layers and that the tree will stand out on its own and you probably won't notice so much that it's on a hill. So I will come back at a later date, photograph this tree because it's right up my street. So. But that's the best thing, you get out, you explore, you find subjects, you make a mental note or you write it down and then you just carry on, do more exploring. So onwards and upwards or downwards towards Gibson Mill.
one of the reasons I like being back in West Yorkshire, and in the UK for that matter, is the history. Everywhere you go, if you go out in the moorlands, if you're out in the woodlands, anywhere you go in the UK, there's always some bit of history. There's always an ancient building from times before, or derelict houses and farmhouses and outhouses up on the moorlands, and then you get this bridge area here. So I'm assuming, well I'm assuming it was a bridge, it looks like it was once a bridge, but that's what I love about it. Like you go everywhere and there's just this element of history and a mystery about the place. I love going to places where you can see the old photographs of places because they look so different. Like if you ever get a chance to go to Hebden Bridge train station and go on the Manchester Victoria side, if you go in one of the waiting rooms, they have pictures and paintings from all the different uh, train stations on that line in the Calder Valley and they're all from like the 1800s and it looks so different and I, I get really excited about that because it's amazing how much the world changes so when you come out and you get exploring and you find little places like this it makes you it makes your mind wonder what it used to look like so obviously there was a, a bridge here long before probably the other bridge and it must have been for a horse and car or some kind of farming but you know it's it's got that element of mystery and wonder to it and, and it's exciting because you come out and you, you know, you're like, what is this place? What, what happened? You know, was there a giant cave troll who smashed it all down? Pro probably not. No, pro probably no cave troll. I don't think cave trolls exist, but you never know. It lets the imagination get going. So, but anyway, I'm still heading on down. We're now leaving Blake Dean and we're now starting to go into the top part of Hardcastle Crags. Now, I'm going on the left hand side if you're walking down. You can go on the right hand side. There is some stairs further back, but it, it, it's, I've chosen to go this side. Uh, there's a bit of history of me going this side. I got mugged by a couple of geese. Pretty nasty geese up on the farm. They came at me. I'm pretty sure they were carrying knives, but I didn't, I didn't want to mess around. I got out of there pretty quickly. It was scary. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about going this way, but it's winter. They might be asleep. So Anyway, onwards and upwards. No photographs so far. You know, but I'm enjoying being outside and it's a beautiful place, so got to enjoy it. So the issue I'm having at the moment is light. Obviously there's plenty of it, it's very overcast and when it's overcast it kind of just makes everything look very flat and obviously because I haven't got here super early, I got here at nine o'clock so I've missed sunrise and it was overcast anyway so I don't think I had the most amazing light this morning but it's making it a little bit more challenging to find something that's just you know something that's standing out from a photographic point of view so I'm not feeling overly optimistic about finding a subject but it's not an issue because at the end of the day the channel is all about exploring photography and exploring so i said it twice because it's important to explore so i'm trying to cross a bog i'll show you the bog of doom and the tree of doom i don't know if i've gone the best way so what i'll do is i'll put the camera down traverse this madness and then i'll talk in a sec Ah, I've survived the bogs of doom. I ah, nearly fell over as well, which was, uh, which was not funny, it was not funny. So, as I was briefly saying before, yeah, the light's not great so far this morning, but I'm gonna try and remain optimistic that there might be something I can photograph. But if nothing pops up, nothing pops up, uh, we'll just explore and I'll show you the top part of Hardcastle Crags, which is what I, would said, what I said I would do at the end of the episode, exploring Hardcastle Crags. Once again, I found a little location, gnarly trees, covered in moss, looks mystical, has that kind of fantasy kind of fairy tale vibe to it, but the light, the light's letting me down and also the atmosphere, the, there is no fog, there's no mist, there's no, is fog and mist the same thing? I think it is, isn't it? But this little area here, we've got some gnarly old trees breaking through the, the rocks, but there's just, it's lacking that light. So actually last time I came here, the sun was on the far side and it was shining through. Now it made it quite a contrasty image because you had all this golden light hitting one side of the trees and you had these shadows that were stretching out up the hillside and it looked, it looked really cool. So 
I was hoping that we might get a bit of sunshine today, but a typical British day, and it's very off-cast. But we have to remain optimistic, you see, when you're a photographer, and you have to chase the light. We will remain optimistic. We'll go to the chicken man. Now it's amazing what you can do if you really let your imagination run wild. I remember actually taking a picture of this little doorway. I, well, I imagined in my head it was this magical doorway into another world. So yeah, I, I stopped. This is probably about six, seven months ago. I stopped and I took a picture of this. And the reason why I took a picture of it is because I looked at it and I thought I could imagine it being a secret doorway where no one's around and it wakes up and it's a little path into another world. So I actually took a picture further down onto the path which we're going to walk past shortly. And uh, when I got back back home, I combined the two shots together. And that's why I like photography. One of the reasons I really like it is because it helps me kind of see the world the way I want to see it or how I actually see it. So when I get back, I then can sometimes craft these things together to kind of produce something how I envisioned the world or how I'd like to see the world. So I've flashed the image up now. It's nothing special, but this is why I think it's so important to get outside and let your imagination run wild because it, it, it's the doorway into your own creativity. And yeah, simple little things like this, you know, it makes me smile because, you know, I love the fact that the UK offers this fairy tale fantasy vibe to it. You know, that's there's a reason why Europe has created like, like Grimm's uh, fairy tales and we've got like mystical dragons and the druids, all those kind of mystical things that are from, you know, folklore and stuff like that they're created by these environments these environments are magical and they you know they, they inspire creative people like you know myself it, it's it's where my it's where my soul comes alive by simple little things like that so yeah i just wanted to share that little story because it, it you know it's a little personal thing that i did and yeah it was fun and i, I enjoyed it so yeah onwards and onwards and onwards and onwards to the chicken man right so we're nearly approaching the chicken man. Now I told you earlier on that last time I went past here there was some crazy geese and they tried to they tried to mug me. I think they were carrying knives and I was just like, I've got to get out of here. So <sighs> pressure's on now to see if we can get past the crazy chicken man and his geese. Hopefully, hopefully they'll be asleep. Well, it looks like I survived the chicken man and the geese. But incidentally, if you are watching this, please don't worry, he's not a crazy chicken man. He's a lovely man. And the geese are not that bad. But they did chase me last time I was there. So be careful and be warned of the geese. The geese can be a little bit crazy sometimes, but they're genuinely pretty friendly. Onwards we go. Okay, so I think I finally found some kind of subject. So as I was walking through this set of woods, I noticed this fallen tree. Now this tree is leaning up against this tree. But on the bottom left-hand corner of it, you've got this other tree that seems to be growing out the side of it. So it's nothing super special, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of it and see how it, how it is. Now this image might not be that strong, compositionally it's not that great, it's not that pleasing to the eye, but I just, I like the intricacy of it, you know, I love the fact we've got a little tree growing out of the old tree that's died, it signifies, you know, the fact that life continues, and I think that's a, a little beautiful aspect to it, so, uh, it's, compositionally it's a little off balance, because you've got one tree going up to the right hand side, and you've got the little tree coming up to the left, so, as I said in my previous video, composition is about trying to arrange the elements in your image to make them pleasing or, you know, it, it, pleasing, to the, pleasing to the eye, basically. So I, I don't feel like this is a very strong image, but at least I've taken an image. You know, it probably won't be one for the portfolio, not at all. But 
it's still me being out in nature, it's me looking for little things that stand out. So like I said, compositionally this doesn't really work as an image, it's not that strong, but there's still an element of a story here with the young tree growing through the dying tree's roots, signifying that life continues. Perhaps I didn't pick the best day to come to Hardcastle, Craigs. Well, to be fair, it's never a bad day to come here, it's just when you're trying to do something specific like find a subject to photograph you know you you are reliant on the conditions you know you do need good lighting you do need some kind of mist or atmosphere or something to you know to enhance the images that you could potentially get so you know but I, i'm not going to sit here and say well i'm not sitting i'm standing i'm walking i'm not going to say you know don't come here if the if the weather's not great it's still a beautiful place it's still a fantastic place to go you know i'd happily come here no matter what the weather was like every single day because you know it's full it's full of so much life it's full of so much nature so you know still get yourself out here even on the bad days even on the rainy days which is probably going to do shortly and the main thing about this episode this episode was always designed to be a follow-up to the previous episode of exploring Hardcastle crags now like i said before so many people get to gibson mill and then they turn around but they don't explore this side of it it goes all the way up to Blake Dean where we started this episode this morning. So there is so much to see. I like there's the whole other side of the valley that I haven't even gone down yet. But I'll probably end up back here at some point in spring. It's gonna look amazing. So, but yeah, like, you know, this, it's not quite gone according to plan so far, but then there was no plan to start off with. You know, it was come out, explore, see what we could find and yeah, have fun, which, you know, I'm having fun, lots of, you know, rambling on and people probably thinking, stop rambling, go take pictures. I will. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. There is a heron that frequents this little area up by the bridge that we just crossed and just further down there's another bridge. Now every time I've been here I've seen this heron and it flies from one location to the next so I did bring my long lens just in case we do come across this heron so I'm hoping that I might be able to do a little bit of nature photography as well so fingers crossed he'll show up, he or she, I'm not sure. But um, yeah so I'm remaining optimistic because as I said before it's not gone it's not been great so far for the photography side of things, but you know, still a bit nice and surprise. It's a great day, so cannot complain. It's like I can't win today, doesn't it? Even the heron's not here. So I'm trying not to be disappointed, but it just seems that the photography side of things haven't quite gone the way I'd have hoped and obviously I was hoping that maybe I'd see the heron as well but this is where I've seen it every single time so has, hasn't been there but still uh, this place is still so magical it's still so exciting to be here and it's still so good to be in this environment so no it's not a bad day it's still a great day the only problem is now there's so many people here because it's getting quite late in the afternoon As I've got closer and closer to Gibson Mill, there's a lot more people and it is a bank holiday so unfortunately it's made it really difficult to film anything and it's kind of distracting me a little bit from trying to find a subject to photograph and also just my exploration and just darting around here and there has kind of been curtailed a little bit because when there's loads of people around, which is fantastic and I, you know I encourage people to be out in nature, I encourage people to get out and to be here, to get to Hardcastle Crags, to get out in your national parks. It's so important, it's so good for your soul, and it's so good for your mental state. But when you're doing something like what I'm doing, it's a very, you know, it's a very solo experience. And then when you're trying to find things and you're trying to talk to camera, it can be a little bit difficult when people are walking around. So, you know, it's all part of it. Uh, I'm gonna carry on, we're almost at Gibson Mill now. It's just around the corner. But I've got a quick idea about going up, just up past Gibson Mill on behind it, there's a, a little path that takes you onto the hillside. So I'm gonna go and quickly explore that and see if there's any compositions. And then I'm probably gonna wrap it up because we've done Blake Dean to Gibson Mill. And yeah, it's a, it's been a great little walk. I've really enjoyed being out. I've really enjoyed being back in a place that really, you know, really appeals to me and really makes my heart sing. So 
it's been a great little morning so far. That was a manic few moments. I, uh, I came up to this little hilly area, but there was so much traffic. There were so many people backwards and forwards, up and down. I've been waiting patiently to just try and A, wrap the video up and B, try and get an image. You know, I tried to photograph this tree behind me. Uh, it, the bracken, it's all dead, curves around. And I, I tried to capture it. It's, it's, not, it's not a great image. I'm not very happy with it. I will flash it up at the end, but I am gonna wrap the video up. I know it hasn't been quite as content filled as my previous episodes. Like, there's not been as many images, but that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get like four or five images. Sometimes you might only get one or two. So um, sometimes you might not get any. So, but if you enjoyed the content, please hit the thumbs up. It does help the channel grow every time someone hits the thumbs up. Uh, I don't know the YouTube algorithms. And if you want to see more of my ramblings and more of my adventuring, then hit the subscribe button. You know, you'll get notifications when my new videos come out. And, you know, I am intending to put them out once a week. So, yeah, stay tuned and have a great week. And we'll catch you on the we. I will catch you on the next episode. Have a great week. Now I was quite happy with how this turned out, considering I was rushing around and it was a manic few minutes up on top of the hill. I felt like compositionally it does kind of work. The foreground is a little bit fuzzy, but it still leads your eye down to the tree and then down to the wall out to the left. I was pretty happy with the final image of the day.